so welcome to the class and this is natural liberation part one and as I was mentioning we just got together that this is based on the teachings of Padmasambhava who is considered by Tibetans to be the second Buddha and there are other second Buddhas that we'll learn about later but uh, he was very significant in terms of helping bring Buddhism into Tibet um, so we'll be using a text called Natural Liberation and that text has a lot of basic practices in it that fit really well for householders because they're concise, they're short, they're easy to do and so that's the reason that we are using it and as I mentioned a little bit earlier that it is, has been reorganized in order to fit a more traditional way of learning these practices because the book is actually organized around six bardos. So we have the bardo of this life, the bardo of meditation, there's a bardo of sleep, so a bardo means any period of time. So in addition to between death and birth, which is called the bardo of becoming, and actually there's a short one prior to that called the bardo of dharmata, and the bardo of actual dying process itself. So those are the six. Uh, so any period of time can actually be a bardo. And because the teachings in the book are organized around those bardos, they're not necessarily the best order for learning them as a practice, particularly as a beginner. But even if you're an intermediate practitioner, uh, this can be a very helpful class in filling gaps that you may have in what you have learned previously and even advanced practitioners that can help refresh things and, and help clarify points that you may have uh, had questions about or even not been aware of. It's uh, not unusual for us to have students have practiced for many years, decades in fact, come into the class and say, I learned so much, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. Now it doesn't mean we're going to learn everything, of course, because there's so much to learn. I mean, you can spend a whole lifetime trying to learn all of the information that's available and not even come close. Uh, you, could, you could spend a lifetime trying to learn what's available in English, which is just a tiny fraction of what's available in Sanskrit and Pali and, and Tibetan. So there are, are many other things that are available that we just don't have access to so huge wealth of information and teachings and so forth that are actually available to us. So the way the overall course is organized is it's divided into eight different sections of six weeks each. And we used to teach this as a more compact class, but it was a little bit hard for people to, to attend everything because there were no gaps at all. We just did it continuously. And so we decided to break it up into smaller sections and put some gaps in there so you have time to either work on practices that uh, you had some trouble with or uh, you know you need breaks in your life for different kinds of things as well so uh, this seems to be working out this format seems to be working out better for students and so I certainly hope that it does for you as well so divided into eight parts and so I just wanted to just give you an overview of the eight parts so you can get the big picture of how the class fits together. So this is part one. So in part one we'll look at kind of a survey of Buddhism overall. Uh, we'll look at it in India and how it went to Tibet, some of the basic principles, how Tibetan Buddhism is organized in terms of the main schools and so forth. And then we'll start looking at, uh, there are four main paths that uh, we're going to look at. There's the path of individual liberation, the path of altruism, the path of Tantra, and the path of uh, <laughs> sorry, say Dzogchen, Dzogchen uh, Zokchen is the, the formal title for it. Um, I'm forgetting. It'll come to me in a minute. <laughs> uh, oh, natural liberation. Um, so as we go through those, and then the other organizational structure for each of these is something called the three trainings. And the three trainings are ethics, meditation, and wisdom. Okay. So within each of the paths, we'll start talking about the ethics of that path, 
Then we'll talk about some of the meditations related to that path, and we'll actually do those. So this is a fairly practice-oriented or meditation-oriented class. And then we'll talk about the result, the wisdom aspect, and there are some meditations associated with that part as well. So we'll go through each of those three for each of those four paths as we go through. So in part one, we'll start the path of natural liber of, uh, uh, individual liberation. And then uh, in part two, we'll continue that, finish that up, and, and do all of the path of altruism, the path of the bodhisattva, if you will. And then in part three, we begin the path of tantra. And the first one, we look at so a series of preliminary practices. And there are two parts to the preliminary practices. And so we'll do the first part of the preliminary practices in part three. And then the second part of the preliminary practices in part four. And uh, or finish those up in there and do the generation stage. So the main practices of the path of Tantra involve what's called the generation stage, generating the deity, generating the mandala, and so forth. So you create this image in your mind of all of those things. And then you do the meditation, and then there's some completion practices associated with it. Then in part five, we get into the completion stage practices. We have generation stage and then completion stage practices. Those are most associated with what is commonly called the six yogas of Naropa or the six yogas of Nagum. And so those practices we will get involved with then after that. Then in uh, part six, uh, uh, part six we continue the completion stage. Completion stage has a lot of, of practices in that. And part seven then we get into the path of great perfection. There it comes. Uh, the path of great per perfection is Dzogchen, highest level of teachings in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. And so there in the first part, there are, again, some preliminary practices. So we'll do those preliminary practices. And then we'll get started with what is called trekcho, cutting through. And then the second part is togal, leaping over. And so those will complete the entire path. So we've gone through from just some background history kinds of information all the way through these different practices to the various highest level of practices within the tradition. So we do all of that in these eight sections. So in one way, it's a lot of material to cover. So the way that we do this is going through this, you'll have practices to do. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about a journal in a little bit to, uh, that we're going to ask you to do as part of this in order to keep a record of your progress and how you're doing. But as you go through, in some cases it may feel like you're just doing fine. In other cases it may feel like it's going too fast. Um, and so what we need to do then as we go through and we complete the practice, then you can go back several ways. You can go back and just redo the entire thing again as a sequence. That's a really good way to practice. You know, once a year, you can go back through and you just repeat the series each time. Now another way to do it is go back and focus on specific things that you found a little bit more difficult, that you need some more work on, and practice those things. So there's different approaches that you can use in doing these and trying to complete and round out your personal practice. Another way is that there are so many other teachings, you can integrate those into the basic core of what you've learned as well. So lots of different ways to go about about completing this practice. So that's a basic introduction to the course here.